to West Ham play AK Larnica, AK as um, as Stell from This Is Mapper podcast um, called it in the opposition chat uh, with Will from the We Are West Ham podcast uh, earlier today. They play tonight, tomorrow, five forty-five kickoff in the UK. So don't uh, don't forget it's an early one, and we'll be on from probably about five o'clock, half four, something like that. So keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the 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 channel and hit the notification. But we had the press conference ahead of the game. Unlike um, sort of the Premier League and the domestic cup games, um, we have it with a player and also the manager, David Moyes. And this uh, this week it was Aaron Cresswell, the West Ham vice captain. Um, so he was asked some questions as well. Quite an inter- you know, it's quite interesting as these things go. Um, obviously, we'll have the thoughts of John T. Coleman later on uh, this evening to keep an eye out for that. But in terms of the main takeaways, let's take you through them as we always do in terms of the synopsis of the press conference. Um, let's start with team news. That's the main thing. That's all we want to find out first initially. Um, Mickey is travelling with us. Mikel Antonio. He felt his hamstring after the game at Old Trafford, but he's with us with this game. Tito Kier is travelling with us as well after his illness. I'm bringing, bringing, not brining, he's not brining, He's not putting a mixture of water and salt on Maxwell Cornet. Might actually improve him. Um, so he's bringing, not brining, Maxi Cornet with me too. I'm not thinking he's ready to play yet, but I'm bringing him with me to be in the squad. Okay. Does that make any sense to me? Does that make any sense to you? Maybe he's more likely to be ready after the international break. Obviously, we play after... Um, Tomorrow we play Villa the follow Villa at the weekend, and then we play Larnaca in a return game at London Stadium next Thursday. And then that's it until the second of April with the international break. So that's what he's alluding to. And Jacob Bonga had a bit of a medical, a medial rather knee ligament injury, a bit of a med. That's quite a that's quite a, a big injury to have. Anyway, uh, we took him off as a precaution. He'll be okay and be with us for tomorrow's game. Vladimir Sufel has a platelet fascia issue with his heel, and time will help it, but he's not available for this game. So as we alluded to, it's going to be Tilo's in, Antonio's in, Oggy's back, Corne's coming, but he's not ready, but he's going to be part of the squad. Okay. And Sufel will definitely not be uh, available for the game tomorrow. Maybe he, I I think he's rested and he'll be back for Villa in, in all odds, honestly. And obviously, you know, this is the first time we've had a Europa, Europa, Europa Conference game for oh, three months, four months, something like that. And obviously, traditionally, we, we sort of rotated. Uh, he was asked about um, squad rotation and how that works with him. And he goes, we've tried uh, we've tried to give the young boys opportunities in the earlier games. I think when it comes to the knockouts, there isn't as much a chance to recover if the results doesn't go so well. We have a squad of players who can compete in this competition and in the Premier League too. So my takeaway from that is if we come, if we're, you know, if we come away from the Larnica game with a you know, really, really quite a good result, then we might put some kids out for the next next uh, round. Will that happen though? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, we're doing our predicted 11s and stuff. And I, I think we'll scrape a win. I don't think it's going to be as clean cut as some people think it will be. But obviously it's anticipation. You know, we, we as fans, we we anticipate, we're excited. And, and so is Moyes. We're really looking forward to it. It's a big opportunity and great that we're at this stage of the competition to reach quarterfinals two years in a row will be huge. Uh, we're looking forward to the game and not for a minute under, underestimating it because we know we've got a tough game in our hands. I think we've had some brilliant performances in Europe this year and and it's given us a bit to hang on to. We will try and take it into this game. We need to get a bit better with consistency all round. Anything we, we do, like we've done in the past, will be terrific. We've got another second leg to play as well. <laughs> so, it's, so it's like, uh, so he's like, well, watch it, hang on. <laughs> you know, we've got the second leg. If that, if we don't, if we shit in the first leg. Oh, I love it. But I know, I, I understand. I mean, I'm excited. It's for me, it's a distraction from the Premier League. I know some people say, oh, you know, it, it is about maintaining the Premier League. But I think for the fans, need a bit of distraction as well. And for the eight, you know, 2000 out there who are going out there, safe travels, sounds like we've had a nightmare. <laughs> it sounds like planes have been delayed and flights have been cancelled and moved to coach to different airports because of the snow. But um, but it's all part of the adventure, isn't it, of, of being a West Ham fan. And uh, and, and fair play to you guys uh, over land and sea well and truly. Uh, in terms of success uh, in Europe, because I'd love to win the competition. I'd love to get to the final. I'd love to progress West Ham into Europe. I think we've got a chance. And on our own day, on our day rather, we have a match. We're a match for anyone. But we also know that anyone can win on any day. 
Very true. Uh, I think to win any trophy as a football manager, football player, very few get the opportunity. Jose Mourinho, strange, but obviously he did win the conference with Roma last year, but obviously all the speculation we've had in the last couple of days, interesting person to bring into the conversation, uh, showed how much it meant to him as he's a ser- and he's a serial winner. We wanted desperately to win the Europa League last year, not you does as well. Was Moisey, but couldn't quite get past the semi finals. Asked about uh, the schedule now, obviously, uh, it's not so bad this side of the international break, but definitely if we progress into the next, uh, into April, if we get into these quarter finals, it does look like it's gonna be quite a hectic April. The difference we see in this is this is something we've done for most of last season, and we know that Thursday, Sunday football is never a brilliant situation. But all the clubs in the top half of the Premier League want to get in these competitions. Not in the top half of the Premier League, David. Uh, we want to stay in it as long as we possibly can and win it, if possible. He's in it to win it. Moisey is in it to win it. He wants to be a serial winner like Jose Mourinho. There we go. Um, Obviously, there were some questions about the Brighton game. Obviously, the, the, the poorness of the game. Um, You know, it was, as I said, probably the worst game I've seen. Since I can remember, definitely under David Moyes, if not under a couple of other managers as well. It had vibes of that game. I remember, part, I think, Pardew's last game where we lost 4-0 uh, away to Bolton. Uh, my brother reminded me of that game. Um, it was locked away in a, in a memory box that I've just unleashed again. And that's probably the last poor game like that. I mean, even when we lost to Forest when Big Sam put the little kids out, at least we scored a goal, didn't we? We didn't have a shot on the target second half. But asked about the Brighton game, uh, Moyes, he said, I think the defeats are not a good thing. There we go, you see, from the horse's mouth. Defeats are not a good thing. Excellent. But our results since the World Cup have gone steadily up rather than steadily the wrong way. Old Trafford took a lot out of us. Brighton was always going to be a tough game. Our team didn't play well, didn't perform well, and haven't performed as well as last season. It's a great opportunity now. Two legs, home and away. That's the motivation. That's the drive. Whatever has just happened has quite gone. There we go. So he, so Brighton's out. Brighton's out of the way now. Let's move it. Let's move it or lose it. Let's move it on. You know, as Anton said in his preview, go hard or go home. Um, and it's it, but it's on two legs. So don't worry. <laughs> I do like it. Ask about our, our opponents, Acre. Um, that's what the, that's what they call it. They call it Acre. A- um, he says, I'm expecting an incredibly tough game from side who have got good momentum in their league. They are the top of the league, the Cypriot League at the moment. They have an experienced side and a team who have played quite a lot in Europe. They have. If for those of you who don't know, go back and check out our um, Will's interview with the um, with Stealth from This Is Mapper podcast. Um, he goes into a lot of detail about their European progress so far this season. Um, it's all I went to champ- it was qualifying for the Champions League, then they went into- then they had to then go into the European Europa League qualifiers, then they played in the Europa League, then they dropped down into the um playoffs, beat uh Dini Pro won the Ukrainian side to then qualify for the last 16 to play with. So they've had they played a lot of European football. Um bits only a couple of games more than us, to be honest, about three or about four games more than us. Um, but uh they as at their top of the Cypriot League at the moment. A couple of suspensions for them based on um, players who have picked up three yellow cards. We haven't at the moment. We've got two. I think it's um, Flynn and Oggy are both on two yellow cards, I believe, um, for the um, I mean, if it's three yellow cards, then you obviously get a spending one match game. Now, that was it for Moisey. Then Cressy took over. So asked about from a, a player's perspective about the team focus and how has that improved or over the last sort of few weeks really is we're fully focused on this game it's another massive game a massive opportunity to put things right and progress the result of the weekend wasn't the best <laughs> you can say that again Chris. but we want to put things right um yeah it makes makes perfect sense to me asked about europe he goes we've had some great times over the last couple of years we want to progress as far as we can in these competitions playing against the best teams in these competitions for the club it's a long time since we've had these european nights <laughs> you want to play the biggest competitions and against the best players and then obviously asked specifically about last year um he said it was tough but we're experienced to move on from it and look forward. We've got to take the positives from it. As a club, it's long overdue. We want to do it this season. European football is totally different to the Premier League. Each team has its positives and negatives. To get to the semi-final is, is a great 
Europe is a great experience. We went far. It was a shame we didn't get past the semi-final. Indeed, it was a shame we didn't get past the semi-final uh, last year when it was a, a great opportunity, I thought, for us. Um, he was then asked some questions about sort of pressure and pressure, obviously pressure on the manager, but, you know, pressure on the players as well. How does that affect players? And he said, well, basically, you know, of course we want to fight for the gaffer. It's not just him who is under pressure, but the players are as well. We need to drag ourselves out of the situation we're in. We need to keep positive and stick together. And that's, for me, I think that's that's sort of the party line, really. Asked about uh, the relegation fight, he goes, we still want to fight and still compete in the Premier League. So there we go. Good old Chris. <laughs> um, asked specifically about his lack of game time. Obviously, he hasn't played so much this season with Emerson and, uh, and Ben Johnson, Tilo Kira, all favoured in his position. Um, he says, of course, I'd like to play, but it's it's been... Uh, but I've been in football a long time and I know how it works. I'm fully committed and behind the boys. Whoever's starting um, and will keep positive, keep pushing and keep believing we can win every game. And, you know, you get that view. You know, I think someone like Chris, he, he, he does give me sort of slight Noble vibes a little bit in terms of, obviously, Noble wasn't playing a lot of football towards the end of his time at West Ham, but was still around, still, you know, cheering people up. And I have that idea that Chris is similar, not maybe not to the level of Mark, but he's been around. He's, you know, he's played, I don't know, must be approaching 300 games for us, really, at West Ham. Um, so he, he's been around the block a little bit with us as a club. The last question was asked about Danny Ings. And he asked how Danny's settling in to the squad. And he says, basically, Danny settled in straight away. Uh, he waited a couple of weeks for his first start and got the two goals. He's been a great addition to the squad. He's come in and settled in great. So there we go. And that's it. That's your press conference. I said we, we should have uh, John T's views a bit later on uh, in Association of Football London. That'll be on the uh, channel a little bit later. And then tomorrow we have all the stuff leading up to the um, 5.45 kickoff. I keep saying 5.45 kickoff, so I remember more than anyone else, to be honest. Uh, so we'll have the um, starting 11s, um, our predicted 11s, um, a little bit sort of, you know, all you need to know about the team, all you need to know in terms of uh, Ica, in terms of them, um, some of the players to watch out for, that type of thing. Uh, and that's it. So take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble, keep the faith, my friends. Come on, you irons. And let's see uh, you soon. <laughs> Safe jails, anyone out there? Not jealous at all. It's about two degrees here in all church. It's been snowing, sleety, and yeah, it's about 25 out there. So, not jealous at all. <laughs>